bevo.com. Philip, you're a well-known visionary and disruptive innovator. I mean that in a nice way. I think that term has somewhat you know, connotations of a naughty school kid, but, but then you make millions of dollars being a disruptive innovator. Um, but how can you make sure that Second Life, now its market leader, clearly market leader in the virtual world space, stays ahead of the competition and remains number one? I think that to be relevant, I, I'd, I guess I'd give two answers to that. One is to properly estimate how quickly the overall marketplace around kind of global virtual reality is going to grow. Our belief is, my belief, passionate belief has always been that the impact of virtual reality broadly, of a virtual world, on the world um, is something that like the internet we simply don't understand yet. I mean when we were all looking at the internet even as late as say 1995 or 1996 we still really didn't understand how deep the impact was going to be. And so I think anticipating that virtual reality is going to have a very deep impact on, on humanity then gives you a competitive business strategy which is if that happens then things are going to open up and become global and become diverse in the in the use models say of, of Second Life very very fast perhaps much faster than we even even as disruptive thinkers much faster than we think so keeping it uh, very open and making it so that you know we've, we've open sourced pieces of our software we're working on open standards and open protocols and we're doing that at a time so early that I, I think you know some of our users and uh, other companies out there in the ecosystem are probably looking at us and saying why are, why are you so aggressively pursuing a kind of a strategy of openness when in fact you could just sit tight and capture more of the market uh, maybe monetize uh, a, a, a little bit better or serve more tactical feature needs a little better. But the competitive strategy that we follow, and I think it's the right one, and I continue to think the data suggests that this is true, is to believe that we're going to very rapidly see this system broaden and open up and therefore, much like the internet, the sort of open, standardized, web server kind of world is going to emerge very quickly and it's a bit like the time of AOL and Prodigy and how rapidly those services became outmoded and replaced by the much more uniform global service that was essentially the internet and the web and so my belief is that we are going to see the same thing happen here with virtual reality and we have to anticipate that as a company or else we will become the outmoded kind of first example in the space so, uh, you know, I think that's one thing. I think the second thing is from a competitive perspective, you have to anticipate that the market is going to grow by perhaps a factor of 100 overall. And what that means, in other words, going from, you know, at, at peak concurrency now, you know, we have, uh, you know, 75,000 or so people that are logged into Second Life. This is still a very small uh, number of people if you believe that this is going to become as globally. Uh, high impact as it is. So this is going to grow to, you know, 700,000 and 7 million and 70 million. These are very substantial amounts of growth. So from a competitive perspective, I think that what that means is that even, at, um, even as a medium-sized company, we have to remain very, very agile and recognize that we're probably at the very beginning of the market and that the competitive characteristics of the market, the business models, the way the product looks and works, they're probably going to change quite a lot over the next few years, more so than we think. So again, I think to be competitive, we can recognize that we're not in a mature market. We're in a very early market that just happens to be big enough to make us a profitable company and allow us to sustain ourselves at a, at a medium size. Bevo.com